Okay, I've been asked to go through this um, before because it's quite a lot of confusion uh, about the world of graphene and how it relates to the world of graphite. Now, um, your end product, what you're looking for, the graphene, uh, is in the qualities of it and therefore the use of it are intimately dependent on the method you use for producing it and um, the source of graphite that you use. Now we're all used to seeing graphite like this, really. This is a block of graphite I got from the art shop. And um, it's just one chunky old bit that's been carved into a pencil. And you can use that, as it happens. Uh, other ways of getting hold of um, graphite are as powder, which is either uh, a natural powder, it's the ground up rock, or uh, a synthetic graphite. And um, it comes in very fine powder form, various grades. And you can use that. Um, perhaps one of the better um, sources of graphite is uh, graphite flake. Now, the reason that it depends on uh, the source is that, as we know, once you get hold of your graphite, it's essentially uh, sheets of graphene laying on top of each other like this. And, and the sheets lay like that. And as you get your um, lump of graphite, which is just your sheets of graphene, and you cleave off the sheets to be a single sheet, then that, graph, that graphene sheet, the size of it, has an impact on the uh, quality of your end product. And the bigger those flex sizes, the better is going to be things like your electroconductivity. The reason for that is that um, it's only going to be conductive if the graphene sheets actually overlap each other a little bit. If they're separated like that, then um, there's going to be no conductivity. If they overlap like that, then they're going to be able to conduct between each other. Now, the thinness of your end product is clearly going to be dependent on the size of these sheets. So if these sheets are very small, you're going to need an awful lot of graphene sheets laying on top of each other closely packed to get good conductivity. If these graphene sheets are very large, so your graphite flakes are large, will give you large graphene sheets, then obviously the um, number of sheets that you need to make a continuous line is far less. So the size and uh, carbon qual quality of the initial flake that you use, or the initial product you use, really will affect strongly the result that you get at the end, as will the processors. Now, the only real problem with um, good quality graphite flake is that um, it was, until recently, quite expensive. There uh, were only a couple of um, suppliers of them, and um, they were supplying to universities, so it was really expensive stuff. Um, Sigma Aldrich and um, the graphite store there were two places you could buy this stuff, but they were... Um, hundreds of dollars and, and just a ridiculous price. So what that meant is that people started looking at things like uh, plumbago and just ordinary pencils. There are exper experiments out there for ordinary pencils. And you will get results with this stuff and the results are reasonably usable. And we've been using that kind of stuff really in some of the experiments because the experiments are aimed at the home. But there's a company just started up. Um, it's a mining company and they're selling um, graphite flake, and it's a very high quality graphite flake, and um, actually relatively cheap. Um, the RS International, they're called, I think, and their website is, uh, rip it down, graphite.com.com. So if you go there and go to their shop, you can see the graphene fl uh, the graphite flake there, and it's a good quality lump gra graphite that you can use in some of these experiments. Now, um, once you get a decent flake, you can start doing some of the processes on it. And there are um, two process methods, really. One is a top-down approach, which uses the, graphene fl uh, the graphite flake, and the other is a bottom-up approach, which uses a carbon precursor, a gas precursor. The um, bottom-up approach is a, what chemical vapour deposition is. It's um, a, a long tube, and you heat the tube and you heat the precursor, the carbon uh, gasifies, it's passed over a catalyst, and you can grow a sheet from that. And, and that's essentially um, what chemical vapour deposition is. It's not the answer to everything, because um, what it does is, um, as the 
metal cools, then the um, graphene doesn't form as one whole sheet. It forms in sections and then grows together. But because it's growing at a different rate, at different angles, it grows together in the wrong way. And so at yeah, the joins of it, you get um, fault lines. So it's not the actual um, answer to, to graphene. There are other better methods. Um, the method that we've been concentrating on is, is the Hummers method. Uh, and the reason we've been concentrating on the Hummers method is because it's um, quite an approachable method. Uh, and it's a top-down approach. Um, <coughs> when you produce the Hummers, what you're doing is making graphene oxide. And the process of making the uh, graphene oxide peels off the f layers of um, graphene from the graphite, but not as flat sheets like this, like we would hope it would be. What it does essentially is crumple them up and peels them off as crumpled sections like this, so you get a whole load of crumpled sections. Then when you reduce that, it, to a greater or lesser extent, retains this crumpled nature. So what they've been doing with the light scribe um, graphene production is they've been taking the graphene, graphene oxide, reducing it, and then when they light scribe it, it forms a structure like that. Now, in terms of supercapacitors, that's actually a really good structure because what you've got there is a large surface area and you create some pores in between the large surface area so you get good ionic conduction. So for something like a supercapacitor, to go through the Hummers method, the graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide on light scribe discs, is a really good method because instead of producing a flat sheet, it produces that crumpled sheet with pores in it that um, you can make a good supercapacitor out of. So it's really quite good. So, um, the, um, the other methods that are, are available to you, really, that are, that are quite approachable, is one is the Hummers method. Um, there is the graphene intercalation compound method that we've looked at. That's where you take the graphite and you ram some other chemical in between it, then explode those chemicals to fire off the graphene sheets from the book graphite. Again, if you use a good quality flake graphite, like the RS International um, graphite, then you're going to get large flakes coming off of there, and that's what you're looking for. Um, other methods would be the um, electrochemical method, and uh, what you do in the electrochemical method is you take a lump again of good quality flake graphite, put it in an electrolyte like um, sulfuric acid, uh, fairly concentrated sulfuric acid, about 20%, uh, pass a, a plus 10 volt DC voltage through it, and it will peel off flakes of graphene from that graphite block. Again, the quality of your um, graphene there is going to largely depend on the quality of your starting product. So if you get some good quality stuff at a reasonable price, you're going to get a good graphene production out of it, and that's what you're looking for. Another method that we've got is the um, sonochemical method. The sonochemical method is um, a way of um, effectively shaking the graphite apart into graphene sheets. You put it in um, a sonicator. Uh, a dual sonicator isn't strong enough for that. You need a stronger sonicator. And um, the shaking apart again, you're going to need to start really to get a good result, a good quality graphite. Now, um, once you've done all of that, then there is um, there are other other things that you can do with it. People have been looking at graphene as this is the answer, but it isn't. It is a very good conductor. It is a very strong material, but it can be made better. Now, we've um, been producing this stuff, and here's the graphene oxide that we've produced earlier. Uh, here's one I made earlier. And um, you can see it lying down there. I've done nothing with it. I haven't dispersed it properly. And that's what we've been producing. But I've done other things with that. And one thing is, is this looks very, very similar. This has been um, re-impregnated, re-intercalated with... Um, with ammonia. Um, this one again looks very very similar but this one has been redone with um, ferric chloride and what those things do are they actually improve the conductivity of the whole thing. So to quick recap we have um, a huge effect on the end result of our uh, processes based on the quality of the starting material and the process that we use, and any additives or changes that we make at the end of it.
Okay, I hope that's cleared up some things, and uh, any questions, please feel free to ask.